Thanks for joining us, I'm Randall Bennett. It's been a couple months since big box retailer Surrogate City closed, and now a new big, bo big box retailer that had previously closed, sounds a little bit complex, but CompUSA is coming back. It sounds like the uh, Tiger Direct, the company who purchased CompUSA, actually Systemax, the owner of Tiger Direct, is gonna be bringing back retail outlets throughout the country, and uh, this kind of could change the consumer electronics landscape a little bit because Best Buy previously was the only national big box retailer. Now CompUSA is coming back to spice things up. To talk about this, we bring in two people who are I respect a lot. Uh, we're talking to Scott McNulty from Mac User. Scott, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We also have John Falcone from CNET Reviews. John, thanks for being with us. Pleasure. So, the, you know, when Circuit City closed a little while ago, people were concerned about Best Buy's already questionable practices of, you know, those extended warranties and other un con consumers kind of are leery of Best Buy a little bit. Um, CompUSA is coming back with some remixed tactics, they're saying, like allowing internet access on all the public computers that are you know, floor models. John, do you think that CompUSA could bring something unique and uh, try something new, or do you think that this is just going to be CompUSA failing again? <laughs> uh, my hopes aren't terribly high, I'll tell you. I mean, personally, I didn't really love the old CompUSA, and I'm not necessarily thrilled that they're coming back. I tend to do uh, 85 to 90% of my electronic shopping online, so um, not terribly interested in a brick and mortar store. But, like you did mention, I, I do like the idea that there is some sort of competition to Best Buy. So, um, as, far as, as far as having more competition in the marketplace, I think that's always good. Scott, what about you? Are you, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are talking about people taking an Apple approach, and you know the Apple retail stores obviously have been very successful. Scott, do you think this is you know something that's a good approach, or do you think it's more just a copycat? Well, I mean, I think that you know the consumer electronics purchasing experience can surely stand to a little improvement. Uh, you know, we go into a Best Buy and. I don't know about you, but every time I go in there, it seems that they're blaring music, and I want to leave as <laughs> quickly as possible. And then they have that, you know, eighty thousand TVs lined up, all showing like the crappiest feed possible. So I think if someone, the the genius that Apple brought, which isn't really all that genius, is just to make it pleasant to go into the store. Yeah. So if the new CompUSA can do that, though, judging from my previous experience with CompUSA, I don't know if they can. <laughs> uh, it'll be great because I'm. Most CompUSA's that I went into were depressing. They made yeah. Best Buy seem like Shangri-La, so we'll see. <laughs> I think on the uh, hierarchy of consumer electronics purchasing, they really kind of failed in order. To me, Best Buy had, even though it was a regrettable experience, it still seemed like a relatively good experience when you compare it to Circuit City. And Circuit City, for me, seemed like a better experience than CompUSA, so maybe this brand reboot will try something. I don't know. John, what do you think? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I do think... Um the one thing with the Apple stores you have to remember is they basically are built around a great product or several great products that a lot of people uh, do really love and, and want to personally interact with and get help with. That's not really true of all these other stores. And uh, it's just not as exciting to interact with uh, an Acer desktop as it is uh, an iMac. That's true. Um, but at the same time, pretty you know, I always wonder why some of these guys just don't like partner up with uh, Starbucks or something and just set up a kiosk in the corner because uh, the the retail environment is so hard even in a good economy and you're, you're dealing with these razor thin margins that um, I just question the, the wisdom of being in that business at all basically. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to think about for sure and you know Apple kind of has had this good streak going and you know in the past their marketing uh, efforts had been to disparage Microsoft. Well, now Microsoft is hitting back with some ads that show sw people who uh, are looking for laptops. They're looking for, you know, a fairly good price laptop, and they're trying to reach out to the mass market. And they show these people end up, you know, they go look at a Mac. Maybe they say it's overpriced, or it's a little snobby, or maybe kids like it. There's different of uh, these like hidden messages in these different ads. Scott, what do you, have you seen these ads, right? And what do you think of these ads so far? Uh, I have seen them, and I think that they are actually pretty clever, the way that they kind of take the stereotypical Mac user and kind of turn it around. Uh, although it's still, you know, one of the ones I saw, uh, they had the person looking at the Mac and saying, oh, it's so sexy and good looking. But, you know, I really want a cheap computer is basically the idea yeah. behind the whole thing. 
So I don't know if that's really the the image that the, the PC makers would want. Hey, I, Apple stuff is cool and sexy, but uh, save a few bucks to buy a cheap PC. But let's I'm not be sure real. If that's... I need to buy this PC because it's cheap. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure. I mean, in this economy, it's probably a good message, but going... You know, for the like, five years from now, I'm not sure if that's what they want to put out there. But. Yeah, I mean, in, in uh, the first two spots, they actually ended up picking up an HP. And the last one, they picked up a Vio, which is like Blu-ray equipped and all these different things. And the idea is that there's this Apple tax where you pay something for the Apple logo and little else. Of course, Steve Ballmer's championing this in all his interviews and everything. John, do you think that there's an Apple tax and that this is real? Or do you think that, you know, yeah, there's actually a reason to purchase a Mac that's not... Uh, you know, equivalent specs. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's uh, this is the problem we always have um, at CNET and pretty much every place else when you're comparing a MacBook to something else, like this new uh, Dell Adamo, for instance. Um, you are literally comparing apples and oranges at that point, <laughs> uh, because more than beyond um, what is arguably, I think, great hardware design with, with the Apple stuff. The OS is a huge selling point, and the fact that people don't um, want Windows, they want this different, um, arguably superior OS experience, and that's that is built into the price, and um, that it's an overall 50/50 uh, design decision that it's hardware and soft and operating system working in tandem, and. I think Microsoft is absolutely right and smart to hammer on the price, especially in this environment. But like you guys are saying, um, going forward, it's it's uh, it's tough to kind of say like, okay, uh, they're they're basically the Lexus, the category, but you can only afford a Chevy, so here we are. <laughs> so go with the Chevy. I don't know, Scott. So Apple tax, like straight up, do you think that there's an Apple tax? And I don't know, what do you? How do you feel when people say that? Well, I mean, if you look just at specs, right, you, you can get the same hardware from one of the PC manufacturers for cheaper than Apple will sell it to you. And so if that's the only thing you're looking at, then yes, there's an Apple tax. But if you're looking at what, uh, like what software is running on that, that machine that you're buying, then I think what you're paying for with Apple is uh, you know, industrial design, uh, the operating system, and you, know, you get iLife included, which is... Uh, more than what you get with most PCs. Definitely. So I think that kind of makes up for it. And in certain segments of the market, I think that Apple's products are competitive, uh, are priced competitively. Uh, I can't speak, but uh, I think the prices speak for themselves. <laughs> nice. uh, but uh, that said, I mean, yes, I mean, if you're just looking at bare bones specs, you pay more for an Apple. But uh, I think obviously I'm I'm talking right now on a MacBook Pro, so I think it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I'm also on a Mac. I don't, John, I don't think you're on a Mac because I think you're on a corporate issued machine. But <laughs> yeah, I'm on my uh, wonderful. Oh, this is a Lenovo uh, uh, ThinkPad. Yeah. But um, I, I mean, I will say, like, I personally think something like the MacBook Air is an absolutely ridiculous product that I would never buy in a million years, basically. Yeah. Um, as opposed to a MacBook or MacBook Pro that have uh, a lot going for them. But to me, the Air is like one of those uh, Apple products where the, the tax, quote unquote, far exceeds the value you're Definitely. getting. Yeah. Um, on an iPod or a, an iPhone or an iPod Touch, that's um, not too much of a premium versus competitors that I think is totally worth it. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for being on the show again. Um, Scott Minolti from Mac User and everywhere else in the world. He's kind of the man when it comes to Apple blogging. And uh, John Falcone from CNET Reviews at CNET.com, and he reviews everything. So trust yeah. John. John's a good guy. So thanks. That does it for TechV. I'm Randall Bennett, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe to us on iTunes. We just got on there. So it's iTunes.com, techv.com for all our stuff. See ya.